Uh, welcome everybody to a new episode of the Bitcoin Report. This time we have a special guest uh, in the show and it's uh, Trace Mayer. Trace Mayer is a financial journalist uh, with his own podcast, Bitcoin Knowledge. Uh, he's an expert on Bitcoin and gold. And he's one of the first investors in companies like BitPay, Armory and Kraken. Welcome to the show, Trace. Thanks for taking the time. Oh, yeah, glad to be here. And thanks so much for uh, doing what you do to build the awareness in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we all do our part in all, uh, in all, all over the world. And um, well, my native language is Dutch, so that's why I, <laughs> so I chose, to, chose to do it in Dutch. But, uh, but sometimes in an in English interview, it's, uh, yeah, the, the, the Dutch people know English good. So it's, I think that's not a, not a big problem. Yeah, I, I actually presented it ABN AMRO and uh, I presented in English. So really? <laughs> and I, hope, I hope they understood. <laughs> they it, seem to. When was it? Two years ago? Uh, when we had the uh, conference in Amsterdam, the Bitcoin Foundation Conference, uh, I came oh, in right. early so that I could uh, present to uh, ABN AMRO. So, and how uh, did they respond in that time? Uh, it was very positive. Uh, the, the Netherlands is actually one of the, one of the real toeholds that Bitcoin has in terms of, uh, of a market. So, you know, it's very interesting to see the growth that's happening there, how quickly everybody's adopting the technology and the serious players, you know, like the they're one of the largest banks and we had lots of professionals there, uh, accountants, lawyers. Uh, so, you know, it's very exciting. Yeah, because um, that was, I think, two years ago, maybe longer. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. It's, yeah, and uh, but but the, the the positivity that you get in that time uh, could it be because uh, they don't uh, it took Bitcoin too serious at this moment at that at that moment because we see a lot of banks now are uh, are up in arms about it about the uh, blockchain. Yeah, I mean the the banks now are very interested in the blockchain, but I, they were taking it very seriously. I think we had someone from the central bank uh, at the meeting. Um, you know they. And this was still very much before everybody started to really understand the blockchain and how revolutionary and how impactful it could be. And, you know, it's it's because people like yourself and, and like me, you know, we're out there trying to do this evangelism, this uh, education and helping people understand uh, how this technology applies. And so, you know, those those seeds that we, we sowed years ago, they're starting to really sprout now. Yeah, because that uh, the organizer of that uh, that uh, was the Bitcoin Bitcoin Foundation. Uh, not of the AB or, and Amro. It was. Uh, it was gosh. separate. It was separate. It was not the big the big Bitcoin Foundation uh, event. Right. No, it was. Uh, it was our local people in the Netherlands who I know, organized it. I think Root Rutger and uh, I f I forget everybody who was involved, but you I know, know. it's very very interesting. They also made the Bitcoin properly. Uh, video. Yeah. I think it's bitcoinproperly.org, which is tremendous video. Yeah. Uh, but talking about the Bitcoin Foundation, um, there is a lot of going on. Some people are uh, are are dismissed from the from the from the from the board. Um, did you do you know those people? Uh, do you have um, uh, do you have uh, information or do you, do you do you have some some stories about that? <laughs> yeah, well, everybody. You know a lot of people. Bitcoin, you have to gossip, right? <laughs> so. Um, actually, you know, I, I had been uh, strongly encouraged by quite a few people to run for the board of the Bitcoin Foundation years ago. So I ran for that. Uh, George Plotzer from Germany. Uh, we both we didn't really want the seat, you know, uh, so I think somebody else ended up getting elected, Elizabeth Cloche, uh, who is an employee of BitPay at the time. And so she's currently on the board i think brock pierce is chairman i know brock uh i know bruce fenton the executive director i know i know jim harper and olivier who they both resigned uh who else is on there mickey malka i think is on there i, I know him bobby lee from btc china yeah. uh you know, at the end of the day, I know Roger Ver, he's the one who put in 10,000 Bitcoins to originally yeah. fund it. Uh, I know Charlie Shrim, who was one of the original founding members. He's in jail now. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. I, I know Gavin, who also was one of the founding members, and John Matonis. And then uh, Mark Carpellis also uh, was a lot of the initial yeah. funding of it. Not and, anymore. And he's in jail too, right? Yeah. Or he's, he's yeah. going to get charged with fraud. Yeah. Um, and then Peter Vicenes, who was the original chairman of it, and 
uh, he's also had his fair share of scandals. So, you know, the, the Bitcoin Foundation as a whole, it's really, you know, just a blight on the industry, in my opinion. I didn't really want to have anything much to do with it. That's why I didn't seriously go after the board seat. Uh, Brock, it seems, wants to rehabilitate its image. Um, maybe that's a good idea, but it's going to cost money. And it's like it's just lost so much credibility within the industry. The problem is that outside the industry, people still kind of look at it and they still give it credence. For example, uh, Gavin is the chief science officer of the Bitcoin Foundation. Like They whatever. don't pay him anymore. So. Yeah, but they don't pay him. And I mean, what's that mean? But when it's in like a Reuters article or in a, you know, in, in one of these articles, it sounds yeah. like an impressive title. And so, you know, I think I think it's probably would be helpful to rehabilitate the Bitcoin Foundation as a whole if that can be if that can be done. What I would not like to see, I would not like to see it co-opted, you know, like if Brock Pierce or Bobby Lee or uh, Mickey Malco, like if they're going to co-opt it and co-opt that kind of branding of Bitcoin as a whole and use it for their own personal agendas and personal purposes, like I think that would be a very bad thing. And I don't think that they like have any serious intention to do that. And since it's out of money, like why not just wind it up? You yeah. know, I think yeah. like Olivier and Jim Harper's opinion on that is probably pretty good. Like it's it's already caused enough damage, like just wind it up, just, you know, dissolve it, get get the books done, wind it up, yeah. uh, you know, clean it up. We can we can always make another foundation in the future. So, you know, that that at least to me seems like a pretty reasonable uh, way to deal with the situation as opposed to, you know, Having this, uh, you know, trying to appear like you're co-opting the brand, like even if you're not intending to do that, I think that, you know, any aspersions that people in the industry might cast that, uh, about that, I think, is a legitimate concern. And so, you know, the, the easiest thing would be to just wind it up. It doesn't yeah. have any money anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's only bad publicity, I think. Uh, yeah, it, it only... Uh, only going to continue causing confusion and harm to the yeah. industry as a whole, causing damage. Um, you know, just just wind it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I was uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, it's it's not bad to have some kind of central authority uh, in case of uh, uh, lawsuits and that, that kind of things that you have. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right? that we have as Bitcoin community a couple of uh, the, the intelligent people that can 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 go to court. Yeah, I mean, we already we already have we have Coin Center, we have the MIT Media Lab that have also gotten funding. Yeah. Like Jerry Brito is doing a great job. Uh, uh, Perry Ann Boring with uh, Digital Cha Chamber of Digital Commerce. I mean, we have yeah. other other groups that are performing a very similar role. So you know, this one it's it three of the founding members have been involved in serious uh, scandal or financial crime. Yeah. They're serving not jail only, sentences right now. Not only uh, financial crimes. But you know, it lost five hundred million dollars yeah. of yeah. the community's money. Um, just wind the thing up. Like yeah. it, it's just such a it's like a big black eye on the industry. Yeah. Like it'd be better if it just kind of goes into the annals of history, in my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> it was a test, and uh, well, it it shows or, something you know, about it. Yeah, it kind of shows like Mt. Gox it. people or something about it. Don't don't get your don't put your uh, bitcoins in an exchange uh, forever. Yeah, and you know it, uh, and and if people are using it for their own personal agendas, you yes, know, well, I, I yeah. think I think that's a problem. You know, yeah. if if you're going to derive your credibility by being, you know, chairman of the Bitcoin Foundation or by being chief science officer of the Bitcoin Foundation, like I think I think that's uh, that's that's not a good use of the branding for the mm -hmm. industry as a whole. I think it's it, it actually ends up doing a lot of damage and harm to a lot of the other legitimate companies out there and the legitimate advocacy groups like Coin Center and MIT Media Lab and Chamber of Digital Commerce. So, you know, it's out of money. Just just wind it up. I think, the, it. I think the impact is not very big, very big anymore. So well, it's, it, it's not very big in the industry, but, but outside of the industry, mm -hmm. You, know, you get these journalists that don't yeah. have any idea or don't don't understand the history and they they you know they see some fancy title on there and it's goat. Yeah. and it yeah it just becomes you know we don't give it any credibility but somebody reading the Reuters article yeah. they think they think the CEO of Bitcoin got arrested and that Bitcoin's yeah. dead it i is. mean 
I mean, Bitcoin hasn't been in the news for the last two years. And so, you know, the general public doesn't really they don't even know anything that's going on with Bitcoin. And then you, you have people uh, involved in all of these scandals that are also the founding members of this organization. It, like, let's just yeah. tie it yeah, up. Yeah. Like, you know, let's try to try to minimize, you know, do no harm, right? Like, let's, let's do no yeah. harm first. And sometimes yeah. when we try to rehabilitate the failed projects, uh, we end up with more unintended consequences and causing more harm. So, you yeah. know, that's kind of my general feeling on yeah. on the Bitcoin Foundation. Yeah. Well, I think uh, that this is a, in, in, the, in the Bitcoin community. I think this is also every the most people think it's uh, so I think. Yeah, so, it, so there's consensus. <laughs> there's, there's, I think there is consensus. So uh, but there are other ways, so let, let it go. So yeah, just, well, just, just tie it up, dissolve it, yeah, like yeah. be done with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sell the furniture. <laughs> um, all right. On on the topic uh, of and on another topic on uh, on gold, um, you have some uh, you have some experience in the in the gold uh, sector. Um, oh yeah, I, well, I like gold tell, a lot. <laughs> yeah. You, you, in uh, well, and 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 think the 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 the, the transfer from gold to Bitcoin. I think that's not re it's not really that 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 big. Uh, what is your what is your thought about it? Uh, Bitcoin and gold, and what are the you know, does it does it touch each other on some and on some uh, some levels? Yeah, so gold is the ultimate settlement currency. You know, at all times in all places, gold remains money. Uh, it's the most liquid asset in the world, and so. You know that's why central banks hold reserves of it. That's why smart individuals hold reserves of it. Uh, nobody's ever gone broke owning gold. It's never become worthless. Uh, it can sit at the bottom of the ocean for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years. It doesn't get dissolved. Uh, it's the you know the ancient metal of kings. Uh, it's a sovereign metal. Uh, it's power in a, in a lot of ways. And what we're seeing is that nobody's gone broke owning Bitcoin. You know, it's been around seven years. It's gone up and down all over the place, but it's never gone to zero. Like nobody's gone broke owning it. And additionally, gold, it's it's analog. It, it doesn't change. You know, it sits at the bottom of the ocean. It doesn't change. But Bitcoin is extensible. Uh, we can program things like smart contracts. We can use the worldwide ledger. We can use this blockchain uh, in very creative ways. And so Bitcoin, we can continue to increase its utility and its usefulness. And eventually, uh, in my opinion, like 20, 30, 40 years down the road, this blockchain technology will become a settlement currency of sorts. We're already seeing the first sprouts of that with uh, Liquid, uh, the net that the Blockstream has come out with, uh, using Bitcoin as the settlement currency among exchanges instead of wire transfers and dollars. And the more that 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 network effect takes place, the more valuable, the more entrenched Bitcoin will become. And eventually, you know, it could it could displace gold as a world reserve currency. Uh, is it very probable? Uh, the market says no. Uh, because you would discount that potential uh, future reality into the net present value of bitcoins and it would go into the price. So, you know, it's not it's not a very high probability right now, uh, but I do think it is a probability. It is a potential future. And so, you know, we should kind of keep our eye on that ball. I think that's the real big value proposition with Bitcoin. That's where Bitcoin is able to be worth millions and millions of dollars per Bitcoin. Yeah, we we we, uh, we heard some 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 countries already uh, talking about um, let yeah, me the see uh, the yeah, reserve Antigua. reserve currencies. Uh, so so as as a backup currency, just like gold. Well, and also to spend off spec uh, fend off speculative attacks. Uh, you know, the report from the Antiguan Central Bank that they should hold some portion of bitcoins yeah. uh, to protect against speculative attacks. I think people don't un don't. Uh, you know, we we discount just how big Bitcoin is. I mean, in terms of M1, in terms of money supply, it's about the size of the Guatemalan peso. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the time might come when when you're able to launch speculative attacks using Bitcoin against other currencies. Uh, and, that, you know, that's where it's going to get real fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a really little dot on the, on the scale of, uh, of, of world currencies, of course. We saw that great but, inf but, infographic. I mean, you saw the infographic, I guess. 
Yeah, but it's it's still in it's still in the uh, top hundred. Yeah, you know, it, it's yeah, it's it is, yeah. it's big, and and Azeroth, World of Warcraft, it's like the fifty largest economy in terms of GDP. So yeah. you know, discounting virtual worlds and discounting the internet and the influence it can have in the real world, uh, you know, don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was in Azeroth for a couple of years <laughs> myself. <laughs> so, that's another topic. Well, um, it help, you know. I, I think I think that's another reason why you know gold is is a different generation's settlement currency, and real's going to change, right? Like we, the millennials, we ascribe value and and our concept of reality and and virtual reality and augmented reality you know these digital goods these digital items in a lot of ways are just as real as or in some cases even more real yeah. than their analog counterparts and you're seeing it show up in purchasing power too for example uh, amazon started selling physical books in 1996 and they started selling ebooks like Four or five years ago, or something, yeah. they've actually sold more ebooks than they have physical books. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a leap. It's a, it's a very and then and no, and nobody changing. thought. Yeah, no, nobody thought about it uh, that way. Uh, if you if you, you charge them out of uh, five years, ten years ago, so this and this can can happen with Bitcoin uh, also. Uh, do you think that the, the big the, the big web uh, stores? Um, oh, the big web stores. Yes. Oh, like Amazon yes. and Rakuten and Dell and they, they're investing. They're investing in in, in information uh, in, in in teams to uh, to investigate uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, yeah, or or they're already accepting the cryptocurrencies. For example, uh, BitPay has yeah. integrated with Rakuten. So you know, Rakuten's the eighth largest uh, website on the internet. In, yeah, is, in that American, the is that an American? Is that an American company? No, it's or? Japanese. All right, that's why I don't I don't know what it is, but it's very it's very big, of, of course. But Amazon, uh, yeah, why why shouldn't they accept Bitcoin? Because it's not a very high uh, investment for them to accept it, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't cost them very much. Uh, they they save a lot in terms of margins. I I wonder how much Amazon spends in terms of money and resources dealing with fraud. Yeah. And yet with Bitcoin, there's no fraud, no chargebacks. Uh, Purse.io, I think, is a great example of yeah, where the true. demand is at. They've yeah. saved customers over five hundred thousand dollars this year. Yeah. Uh, so I think Amazon has every reason to accept Bitcoin. And now their competitor, Overstock, they accept Bitcoin. And yeah. in effect, Amazon has has given up on over 150 countries in terms of markets because those countries don't have credit cards and no, whatever, but FedEx and UPS can still send stuff there and yeah. Overstock will ship it there. And it so, can buy with Bitcoin and yeah, they are yeah. global again. So and, and Overstock is selling to those markets and Amazon is losing that race. Uh, so, you know, Amazon, they, they have so much to gain from accepting Bitcoin. They have really nothing to lose. Uh, it what's surprises holding, what's holding them back? Um, probably institutional inertia. Um, yeah. They might think that there's not enough, uh, that there's not enough liquidity with it. Um, I mean, there, there could be any number of reasons. It's still small, relatively untested. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, we Dell accepts Bitcoin, yeah, Microsoft, Microsoft accepts Bitcoin, online, yes. Rakuten, Newegg. Uh, you know, Amazon needs to get with the times. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, They're gonna get obsolete. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a problem because you have to you have to jump on the train because uh, the train is driving really fast. Yeah, and and it would sure make uh, the the checkout process a lot easier at Amazon. Um, you know that that would they, they they seem to be very big on like one click checkout and yeah. you know they they want to make it really easy because it is easy but it, yeah, the money it, transfers it stays the same of course yeah i mean why do i got to fill out all this information and crap yeah. for my billing address i mean no, that decreases customers. conversion yeah. rate you know if if it just serves a qr code and i send the bitcoins and it ships to whatever address i'd put yeah. in like let's say i'm buying a gift for somebody i mean i have to put in their shipping address and i have to put in my billing address yeah, for a credit card bizarre. like why is that even relevant to making the purchase? Uh, yeah. yeah, so you know, I, I, I don't really see where Amazon's got any particular uh, reasons not to accept it. And I think they, it, they, have, they have it already. I think they can impl implement it right away. But I think they're waiting. Yeah, I mean, if it what limit it to like uh, 
two hundred dollar or just try car, it shopping cards and, and, or something. And, and, is, you know? Yeah, it's load, load gift card balances yeah. with it. I mean, yeah. you know, it just, I, yeah, I have, I don't understand why they don't accept it, but whatever. <laughs> I think they have, they have a re reasons for it. Well, they they're they're losing some of my business. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. like they're losing some of my business because they don't accept it. I still, you know, buy lots of stuff on Amazon. I love Amazon, but yeah. uh, in some cases, I, you know, I've moved my business elsewhere because they don't accept it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, they well they they listen to this uh, this episode. So uh, <laughs> maybe who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So on the on the topic of the the big blockchain discussion, it's in is inevitable that we are talking about it. Um, <laughs> Uh, more gossip. <laughs> yes, yes, more gossip. Um, but it, it, it's part of the consensus of Bitcoin. So this, 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 these conversations need to happen, of course. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> um, so what do you think will happen in the next weeks and months when the number of transactions uh, per day are reaching an all-time high filling blocks? And what is your view on the blockchain debate? Uh, are we getting close to, to a consen consensus? And who's taking the lead, miners or core developers? Because they're, they're pointing to each other at this moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> you take the lead. You, you, you tell them. Yeah, I don't know. It's your you. It's cons <laughs> that's that's the big problem at this moment. How you do you reach consensus? It's something really new. Yeah, I. <laughs> I mean, personally, I'm I'm fairly ambivalent. Like whether the block size gets raised or doesn't yeah. get raised, I don't know that I really care that much what i care about is like why do people hire bitcoin like why do people want to buy bitcoin and hold it you know i'm i'm really interested in like this guy in brazil with a hotel uh he buys a thousand bitcoins a month you told the it's like a podcast, yeah, from his hotel. You know, I'm, you I'm, interested in, i'm interested in people like that coming into bitcoin i'm interested in people buying 50 to a thousand bitcoins and just holding it yeah. uh you know it's the speculative network effect it's takes place that's that's he hires it for an investment right well i mean you when you hire bitcoin uh you know that you're you're buying it and holding it when you fire bitcoin you're trading bitcoin for some other good so when we're talking about like the the transaction size you know that's that's helping people fire bitcoin right yeah <laughs> like, yeah to um, use it to use i mean it. when yeah. when we look at traditional currencies you know you have bank accounts and you have three to five days to transfer the money from your bank account to paypal well that incur that forces people in effect to hire those currencies for that three to five days so as we increase the the turnover as we increase the velocity of bitcoin it actually has a depressive effect on the price um you know, not that that network effect is bad. I mean, I funded BitPay because I wanted to increase that liquidity. Yeah, yeah, but that, yeah. but that liquidity does have, in the short and medium term, it has a depressive effect on the price. And I think that in a lot of ways, uh, BitPay has outpaced or outrun the adoption of the underlying holders of Bitcoin, yeah. uh, the people who hire it. You know, BitPay has made it very easy to fire Bitcoin. And so when we're looking at the block size debate, like, is it really all that important? Um, you know, sure, if it takes longer to confirm transactions and with replace by fee, it could make BitPay's job a lot harder. But I have all the confidence in the world in the smart people at BitPay yeah. and the smart people at in Coinbase uh, and in Bitcoin as a yeah. whole that they can deal with increasing the security of Bitcoin, increasing, you know, its use of getting stuff into the blockchain, you know, because there's... I, I was talking with, you know, both uh, Eric Voorhees and uh, Jeff Garzik, you know, about this over the last week or so. And, yeah, there are use cases for zero confirmation uh, aspects of Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, like the reason we have a blockchain is, is that, is, right, yeah. is to confirm transactions yeah. like zero confirmation transactions don't mean jack. What is, what is it? Uh, well, I mean, it's just it's a valid transaction, hopefully, that's been broadcast out to the network. Yeah. But if it's not in the blockchain, it didn't happen yeah. as far as like the network is concerned. And so building your business model around zero confirmation transactions like Coinbase or BitPay or BlockCypher, some of these companies might do, you know, that. That, that that's building on sand and yep. so likewise you know when we're looking at why we hire bitcoin we need to build on the on the the 
the best, the most solid uh, aspects of, of Bitcoin's use. And at least, you know, I think that that is the monetary sovereignty aspect, being able to hold something separate and apart from the financial system in an equity-based, censorship-resistant, decentralized, monetary sovereignty type of way. And that that takes priority over other use cases. Uh, you know, anything that would increase that particular use case, like, I think that's great. And if that means that we need to increase the block size for that type of use case, I think, you know, we should highly consider that. Things like confidential transactions, uh, you know, I think that would help with that use case. Uh, but helping make like Dogecoin transactions of de minimis amounts, um, you know, and, and the other thing is when we're looking at the value that the Bitcoin network provides, the only real metric that we get to use to determine what people are willing to pay to use Bitcoin, you know, because everybody's got an opinion. But what I care about are opinions backed with money. Right. Because that yeah. shows what people are willing to pay for. Yeah. Uh, the only the only metric we have to show how much people are willing so to pay to use Bitcoin are transaction fees. And guess what? Three years ago, people were paying about $150 a day in transaction fees. Today, they're paying $7,000 a day in transaction fees. And when we're looking at, you know, if you've read Human Action by Mises, and I would say that, you know, a lot of people, even though they, they, they make arguments, I don't think they understand the economics. And, you know, I read just about everything that Jeff Garzik writes, but in terms of the economics, I don't think he really, I don't think he really understands the Austrian School of Economics uh, and, and the, the comparative value theory. And so when we're looking at, you know, the use cases between a five cent transaction fee and a seven cent transaction fee or even a 10 cent transaction fee, uh, you know, it, it, the, the way that that happens is very marginal in terms of the use cases that will get impacted or affected. And as long as people are still paying, as long as people are still yeah. paying to make transactions, it's then it's working yeah. de facto. You know, and so, you know, pe people were like, oh, we, we had a stress test on the network and all the blocks were yeah, full. full yeah. And there and and people, so, some people on on the other side were like, oh, they're spamming the network or whatever. No, no, no. The, there's no spamming of the Bitcoin network. Like all transactions are valid. And if people want to pay a bunch of money to fill up the blocks, yeah. their, their yeah. transactions are just as valid as anybody else's. Right. Yeah. According to the rules of the network. And so. Yeah, you know, I think there has to be some limiting mechanism uh, in terms of a block size. You know, I think that I think there's consensus around that. I think that uh, Peter R's work on the on the subject that that it'll naturally seek equilibrium. I think that that's invalid. I don't I don't think that that I don't think that his economics uh, in his economic analysis are good on that. And I actually had, you know, I discussed it with Peter over dinner uh, up in Montreal. And so, I mean, we should have a block size. I think that there's wide consensus about that. The issue is like, well, what should the block size be? And in order to determine that, I think we should look at, well, what are the priorities for Bitcoin? And I think the priorities should be monetary sovereignty, you know, censorship resistance all of all of those yeah. aspects not necessarily helping it make it easier to fire bitcoin uh <laughs> no, no. and and so things like segregated witness uh confidential transactions you know all and and the other thing is you know segregated witness is a prime example like why did Dr. Wooley, why was he the one who came up with that? Yeah, I right? mean, like, strange. Like, yeah. like why, why did Luke, Luke Jr. and Greg Maxwell and Peter Wooley, why were they yeah. the ones that came up with segregated witness? Like, why didn't Mike Hearn or Gavin come up with segregated witness? Because segregated witness, it, it'll have this multiplicative effect on any block size increase that's done in the future. Like, why didn't they come up with that? I mean, why aren't we optimizing Bitcoin the absolute most that we can before we go and try to increase some of these different constants? You know, optimizing uh, the the validation of the core client, making it easier to, you know, making it easier and faster and more efficient. Like, let's optimize all of that stuff and then we'll worry about yeah. increasing one of the constants. Uh, I think that's a much safer, a much more conservative approach. And at the end of the day, what other... What other project out there poses any threat to Bitcoin?
I mean, Ripple's the next largest. It's I got think what? Dogecoin a, it's the only one. Who, <laughs> which one? Dogecoin. Dogecoin yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, seriously, yeah, like there what? Was no, a, there was, there was no. What, what poses? A, what poses a threat? You know, Ripple's got 150 yeah. developers. We've got over 10,000 working full time on Bitcoin. And it's not open. Ripple, Ripple is not, not. Yeah, Ripple's not open. Ethereum? Oh, Ethereum. Does it pose a threat? They're running out of cash. I think they have less than a million dollars of cash, maybe yeah. 50 full time developers. And at the end of the day, with Rootstock, and I spent quite a bit of time in Mexico City talking with both Sergio uh, DeLerner and Diego was, Gutierrez yeah. about Rootstock, you know, so Ethereum's going to get basically rolled into bitcoin uh like what poses a threat to bitcoin no and not, every, i mean nothing to, nothing poses a threat all to ids can be implemented in bitcoin that's that's a great yeah a great and thing so, and so if transaction fees go from two cents to ten cents i mean even, yeah. even if they even if they you know they went up to two two dollars that's still cheaper than a wire People transfer pay by if, orders if works, of magnitude. Right? You know, it's yeah. 20 times yeah. cheaper than a wire transfer, international yeah. wire transfer. Plus, you know, look at look at costs. And we, with Bitcoin, we, anytime we're transferring money around, and that's just one, one use case of Bitcoin, you know, I'm using the yeah. transferring money aspect of it as opposed to just the store value aspect of it. But when we're transferring money, it's time, value, and money. Time? Bitcoin superior, transfers it faster yeah. than anything else, transfer wise, Zoom, wire transfers, 24 hours, PayPal, a, day. 24 hours a day, zero, you know, 100% uptime, uh, time, uh, privacy, time, money, privacy, uh, Bitcoin's much more private, although yeah. there is a blockchain, you know, it is arguably more private than all the other ones, confidential transactions will increase yeah. that privacy, um, and then money. I mean, really, like the value proposition from these other two prongs is is going to is going to be decreased so much that an increase in the cost from five cents to ten cents or even two dollars is going to cause people to choose to transfer some other way than via Bitcoin. Um, and then they're going to choose that other way to such a degree that it poses a mortal threat or a mortal danger to the Bitcoin project as a whole. Like, by all means, let me know what project that is because I want to invest in it and yeah, I want to buy some of that project. But it isn't there. I but but I just don't yeah. see I don't see the competitive threat yeah. out there. Yeah. So, you know, it and 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 since the competitive threat isn't out there, then that means that we have plenty of time yeah. to to optimize really it. Do, yeah. To, to optimize it, to really put in the hard effort and the brain yeah. power, Expanded, you know, coming up yeah. with stuff like segregated witness as opposed to just increasing yeah. the block size that could cause, you know, that, that sets a different trajectory uh, or inflection point on it. You know, I think, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm fairly ambivalent about how, like what the block size should be. But at the, the other standpoint, I, I think we need to proceed extremely carefully, extremely yeah. conservatively. But, but we can because we have the time. There is yeah, no we, we have plenty of time. We, we have plenty of time. There's no the pressure. We feel there is, I feel some kind of pressure before, yeah, we have to do it, uh, everything. The, the blocks are are, are being, are, are getting, well, getting full. Yeah, but, but that just comes from not understanding economics. No. You know, if you know read it. No read if, it. Yeah, but I mean, if people read Human Action and they understood it, yeah. um, you know, that, and the other thing is, you know, I, how many bitcoins do developers have? <laughs> you yeah. know, because because you know, there there I was talking with another big early adopter, and he he was kind of asking similar questions about block size and everything, and he was like, yeah, but. You know, how many Bitcoins do some of these developers have and are their interests the same as the big holders of Bitcoin? And I was like, well, you know, <laughs> they, I don't think they have a lot of Bitcoins. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and if they don't have a lot of Bitcoins, then no, their their interests aren't necessarily the same yeah. as big holders of Bitcoin. And at the end of the day, it's the big holders of Bitcoin that are the ones that that make that price go up. You know, so I yeah. guess if, if you if you like a high Bitcoin price, uh, you need to do what the people who are going to buy and hold a lot of Bitcoins yeah. want want done. You know, because right. they're the ones hiring Bitcoin. Yeah. And the miners, you know, the miners play right into all of this. You know, because uh, people are like, oh, but we can't get our transactions into a block or mined and. Like last I checked, anybody could have mining equipment and anybody could connect it to the network. And so everybody should be able to get their transaction mined if they buy enough mining equipment. 
Yeah. You know, but then we're getting back to the golden rule, right? Yeah. He who has the gold makes the rules. Yeah. And I think that might be where some of the tension is. You know, we a lot of people on Reddit, they, they don't necessarily have, you know. It's a they mess. Don't, it's a mess. They don't have very much money. You know, they no, don't have very no. much money. They don't have very much education. And the other thing is, you know, in terms of page views, Reddit is actually very small. Uh, in terms of the entire Bitcoin community, you know, so when people say, oh, well, everybody on Reddit, yeah. you know, well, we first, you know, we've got the, 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 our Bitcoin, we've got our BTC, we've got our Bitcoin XT and our BTC is about one eighth yeah. or one twelfth yeah. the size of our Bitcoin and, uh, and Bitcoin XT is maybe one fiftieth the yeah. size of our Bitcoin. Well, even our Bitcoin, uh, I mean, it's it's orders of magnitude smaller than several of the largest Bitcoin news sites out there. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> I mean, our Bitcoin isn't even a very big community. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's very is. But I think people underestimate like just how big Bitcoin is. I mean, there are a lot of people and a lot of page views involved in Bitcoin, um, and. You know, like Reddit's just a very small subsection of all of it. Yeah, it's a mainstream, uh, mainstream section of uh, of the news. Well, I don't, well, I don't I think, think. No, I, I'd say our Bitcoin no? is even the mainstream section. You know, we're, you know, mainstream sections would be sites like Bitcoin uh, Magazine or CoinDesk or yeah, you know, all right. some yeah, of these other ones yeah. uh, that do, you know, that are doing more page views than Reddit does, than the yeah. subreddit does. Uh, you know, so. But our um, our Bitcoin, there are, are five hundred people online. That's at this that's moment. really small. So and I mean, I I have thousands of people that download every episode of my podcast. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so, yeah, I, mean, a, I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm there. There are lots of people that are. You know, I'm not saying that there's nobody at our Bitcoin. What I'm saying is that like our Bitcoin is three four yeah. percent of the total Bitcoin community, if that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just not very big. And so anytime somebody makes a claim like, well, everybody in Bitcoin, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm very skeptical place, place. Be because, I mean, we've got huge communities in Russia. We've got huge communities in South America. We've got huge communities in China. Uh, I mean, my my podcast is pretty small, but it's, you know, it still gets thousands and thousands of downloads yeah. every episode, yeah. Yeah. but it's only in English. You know, and I would I would say that even the English market isn't even 50 percent uh, or more of the Bitcoin community as a whole. So just by the language barrier, uh, yeah. our Bitcoin isn't even able to reach more than half. So, um, it's, so, so it's, I mean, Bitcoin's big. So it's hard to measure what 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 the tendency is in, in the world, because there are so many splintered uh, communities. So, yeah, that's that's yeah. hard. Yeah, I mean it's really <laughs> yeah, it, right to to measure, <laughs> measure to that. Yeah, I mean it is it is a difficult thing to accomplish. Um, uh, I I was reading a post by Gavin about this new website called bitcoinocracy.com. Oh, no, and yeah. and it's really kind of cool because you like what it does is you can sign a message uh, like uh, you, you sign a message with the private key and you basically vote. So you're able to you're able to vote. The votes are counted by the number of bitcoins held by the address, right? And so, like you're like we're able to see what people actually sign and vote for. Um, so maybe that's a way that we can we can find more uh, consensus. I mean, it would be great if we had a site like Reddit where user profiles could be signed by a certain amount of Bitcoin. And then what I could do, you know, I say I'm going to go read the news articles. I could be like, you know, I only want to read comments. Incredible, where, incredible. I, yeah, I only yeah. want to read comments where the users have signed with 100 yeah. Bitcoins yeah. or more. Yeah. You know, or and it's uh, possible with Bitcoin to sign, yeah, sign, yeah, I mean, sign we, messages. So yeah, we, we should be able to start. I, I would I think that would be a really cool way to uh, yeah. start applying the technology because you know it's so easy to make troll accounts and all this stuff. Yeah. And as a reader, like I don't want to spend all my time sifting through a bunch of garbage, right? But at the same time, I do want to have the opposing side of the view. So like. I mean, Th Thamos is in a difficult position because do you let it just get run over by trolls or do you yeah. moderate the debate and then get the Streisand effect, right? Yeah. And, and 
I, when I interviewed Gavin and Adam back for my podcast, you know, I, I, I was like, I don't really like what Thamos has done. But at the same time, I do see like, you know, the, the reasonable argument on his side for doing it. But this could be solved with the technology. You know, if, if, if accounts had to sign that they had, you know, with a, with a hundred Bitcoins in their address, and, or they just didn't appear and each user could like sort or, or put their settings on who they're willing to read comments from, then the user could be the one in charge of the moderation instead of Thamos. Um, and then, you know, we could, we could weigh the, the, the upvotes and the downvotes could get different weight based on uh, how many Bitcoin someone signed with or how much credibility we associate with a particular account or things like that. You know, I, I mean, I'd give it, I'd give, tons of extra waiting points to Gavin and Jeff Garzik and Eric Voorhees yeah, and Roger right. Bear and you know some of these people that that in effect would begin to curate the con the, the content kind of like you know why we follow different people on Twitter is because they act as a curation for the different content because otherwise you know it's we're just getting overloaded like yeah. trying to take a, a drink from a fire hose it's yeah. just impossible because there's so much information that we get buried under so I mean we have to have some form of moderation but I I want to see it be moderated by the individual and that I think we got to build out our own technology. So it'd be so cool to see something like Bitcoin Ocracy merged with something like Reddit, yeah, uh, right, and, it, right yeah. where we're able to vote, and yeah. and those votes are actually backed up by something scarce, yeah. you know, backed up by uh, bitcoins. Uh, maybe if you have one one Bitcoin already, maybe you can do you you have some, have more credibility than a, than a troll. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we have no idea. Like, we have no idea what some of these people. We have are we have very bright people with with with, with very a small amount of bitcoins. So, so yeah. we don't have to. We don't want to get those in the, in the yeah. discussion. But but if it's but if it's mo if if the settings are are done by the users themselves, you know. Yeah, you can you, filter out what you, know, you want. And you, yeah. Like, oh, you know, well, this account's yeah. only got half a Bitcoin yeah. backing it, but they've made three or four really good comments. I'm going to increase their weighting yeah. by a factor of 20, yeah. you know, then. But that I, that's what we need to have. We need to have a way to to moderate where the user can moderate the stream of information that they get. And that way we can still get opposing viewpoints. Uh, but it's, it's but, okay. But I mean, that's what we want, we right? Want because, like, because when the Gutenberg Press came out, you know, ten ten years ten years after the Gutenberg Press, they made romance novels. <laughs> it took a yeah. hundred it took a hundred and fifty years to come up with the Scientific Journal. And what the Scientific Journal did was it it brought into consensus the scientific arguments that were going on. It was a new form of arguing, and you know that's what that's what I think we're going to see things like GitHub in terms of version control, things like Reddit and book mixed with something like a Bitcoinocracy, we can actually get a new form of argument instead of just like YouTube comments or Reddit yeah, comments, yeah. right? That are like totally not useful and just waste no, a bunch of time. Is, and in is. some cases are being funded by MI6 and the Department yeah. of Defense in the US. Yeah, were, I mean, like a lot like of the been, finest trolls are, are on these uh, on these forums. Are, are on the payrolls, yeah, are on the payroll of, yeah, of nation states that are that yeah. are gone in to intentionally destabilize yeah. communities and discussion. Well, to slow um, down the bit, Bitcoin because it's well, the only thing you can do is slow down, but not right, I, stop it. And I'm not saying, and I'm not saying that that they're like actually running some type of psychological yeah. operation or campaign on Bitcoin. But what I'm saying is that we we do know that they engage in that. We've had those types of leaks and and yeah. and investigative journalist reports. It's plausible that they could be engaging in it. How can we use the technology to defend against those types of attack and protect our time and attention? I mean, like with my podcast, for example, I have somebody edit out the ums and ahs yeah. because out of a 30 minute interview, it saves about two to three minutes of time. And when I multiply that by thousands of people that are listening to it, I'm saving hours and hours yeah. of, of yeah. time for people because I don't take anybody's time or attention for granted. And that's that's really what we're talking about, like these trolls just being a time suck on people. Yeah. Um, that's what, you know, distractions. we need distractions. Yeah. So we need to have a, we need to have a user, a, a form of user moderation, you yeah. know, because I don't, I don't want Thamos moderating everything. No, you know, I, mean, yeah. I mean, even though I think Thamos does a, a 
good job in a lot of ways. Like, I don't want him moderating everything. But you can self-regulate, right? You can, you, yeah. Forums well, especially with the technology. Yeah, like with Bitcoin. Some of these technologies that, we, that we've been discussing in that type of an application, then yeah, we're going to have, you know, we can have user moderation, which I think would be orders and orders of magnitude just better like, than Just seating. like Uber, uh, Uber does, you know? Yeah. With, 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 with good, good uh, reviews. Yeah, good reviews, and yeah. except we're able to have the good reviews yeah, backed by signatures of yeah. the amount of bitcoins people are holding. Yeah. That way, you know that that they're yeah. actually a real person. <laughs> and with, with email also, because uh, and maybe there are going to be a new email system which uses uh, Satoshi's to uh, to send an email. So that you yeah, well, get rid Jesse, of the spam. Get rid of the spam. Uh, yeah, Jesse Powell actually uh, he he did a presentation on that in Hong Kong called Elephant Grass, yeah. and you know you, you kind of have to have this elephant grass to keep the little keep all the rats from like yeah. overrunning you. <laughs> yeah, it would, it would be great in in in, in cooperation with a twenty one uh, machine, mm -hmm. because uh, I think in the near future uh, everybody is is mining a couple of satoshis every day, maybe a hundred or something and can do transactions with these uh, can do transactions with it so it could be used for email and maybe for voting systems for reddit we can we can do everything with it this yeah it's, it's i mean the and, system. and especially like check lock time verify yeah, has yeah, well, it's, been it's activated amazing. so the lightning network is very yeah. much on the horizon in terms of what's actually in the protocol that's needed for it um you know it we're we're going to be able to do microtransactions on an absolutely massive scale. Pro you know, chip? Do you know Pro chip? Uh, no, no, I'm not. not you have to check it. It's them. great for microtransactions for, uh, yeah. for artists. Okay. Yeah, it's from uh, Chris uh, Chris uh, Ellis. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, will send, I will send you a link. It's, 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 yeah. it's very good. It's better yeah. than Chase Tip. <laughs> <laughs> They're in, in, in troubled waters at this moment. No, no withdrawal fee, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Um, on another subject, um, you you uh, you invested in Armory. I got a, I got a question from a, from one of my viewers. What the status is of Arm Armory? What are, do you have future plans? Because we have hardware wallets also, so they they are doing a lot of of, of hardware and cold storage uh, also. So, what are your do you do you have plans with Armory? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. So currently, Armory has been focused on building out enterprise solutions. You know, building out solutions for that, that would be for like AB and AMRO. Um, so HSM devices. You know, just like the big, like the big high quality enterprise level solutions. Uh, and that code hasn't been released out to the public. Um, in terms of you know, we have been maintaining the uh, the public version. So, like the high low signatures, there was a patch put out in nine three point three. Um, we do we do have on the drawing board like BIP thirty two and uh, a lot of these other these uh, other applications and stuff. So it's just a matter of you know having it have the high enough priority. Uh, you know. Why do you hire Armory, right? <laughs> I mean, most of the Bitcoin community uh, is able to use Armory for free, so they're you know they they're not really paying money for it. Uh, beggars can't be choosers, right? Yeah. Um, but even with the hardware wallets, you know, we would like to do uh, like Ledger integrations, uh, Ledger and Trezor integrations. Um, uh, smart cards. Uh, actually, that's part of our enterprise package. Uh, we've got smart card integration, but I'd actually like to see the smart card integration uh, open source to the entire community because yeah. that that would make it very easy in terms of the like the multi sig applications. But we also need to get the BIP thirty two done. You know, the new wallet format, so that we can then apply a lot of these enterprise solutions. So you know, it's on the drawing board. It is a priority. Uh, is it the highest priority? Not really, because we have people that will. Pay. <laughs> and the yeah, people that yeah, pay are going to be a higher priority. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, anybody, you know, any consumer that wants to see this this type of stuff rolled out, hey, you know, if you want to, if you want to write a check, you know, or send a bunch of bitcoins, like by 
all means we can we can increase the priority <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i mean you look at some of our our full-time engineers on the project you know we've got five of them and they all earn over a uh, hundred thousand dollars a year and they could earn probably more than the more than what we pay them significantly more uh, if they were working yeah. at Google or Apple or some of yeah. these other places. So, you know, getting them into the Bitcoin ecosystem uh, has been difficult uh, enough given the opportunity cost, uh, but keeping them is also difficult yeah. because, it you is. know, you need revenues in order to uh, sustain that type of payroll and whatnot. So, you know, it uh, we do want to build a lot of that stuff out. And I mean, I'd love to see it more than anybody else, but at the same time, uh, I, and I think, I think this is a lesson in general for the Bitcoin community is we need to be doing stuff in a financially sustainable way. Uh, I was reading an article actually by a friend of mine who I introduced Bitcoin to, and he's like, Oh, if you get involved in Bitcoin, you might, Die poor and alone. Yeah, and I alone. read the article. Right. Yeah. And he, he's like complaining about earning seven cents, like writing news articles. And it's like, <laughs> look, if, if you can make so much money somewhere else, like go do it, yeah. right? Um, Satoshi, I mean, people, people, I remember one of the forum posts, somebody was asking Satoshi about something. Uh, and Satoshi was like, look, like I don't have time to explain this to you. <laughs> <laughs> Back in like the day, back like, in the day. like yeah. Satoshi's time and attention, like his value and opportunity cost, like it doesn't make sense for him to be teaching no. somebody no. about how Bitcoin works. Like, you know, and, and if the market is not paying enough for page views or the market's not paying enough to, to make it financially sustainable for writers, yeah. then guess what? Maybe that stuff that you're writing isn't yeah. valuable enough yeah. that consumers are willing to hire hire it right to pay for it. so so i think that you know we, we we've had a lot of uh you know we've had a lot of science projects in bitcoin we've had a lot of you know people just working on stuff that they find fun which is great you know work it's on passion, stuff that you passion find driven fun. community uh, passion why driven i'm doing it, so. but but you know don't expect to uh, you know, there are a lot of people in the world that want to do fun stuff all the time. And then they make the mistake of, of trying to make their profession something that they do for fun. Don't quit your day job. You know, like, like actresses or uh, writers or, yeah. you know, uh, Broadway, you know, a lot of these things, you know, they do it because it's fun and it's flow inducing. But you got to find something that people are going to be willing to pay for. Yeah. It's one of the reasons surgeons actually have one of the highest qualities of life, uh, as reported, because they're doing something highly challenging and stimulating that is flow inducing. They earn good money doing it. They feel like they're helping the world, yeah. um, you know, because they're they're helping Saving save people's people. lives. Yeah. Uh, you know, so they 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 kind of get everything out of what they've chosen to do as a profession. Uh, but just you know like maybe Bitcoin journalism doesn't pay enough no. because people aren't willing to pay to get educated about it. I know uh, it's, it's true. And, and if that's the case, then you do it for fun or you yeah. don't do it, but don't yeah. complain about not getting paid for doing it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on, you know, really. But that's that's another thing that has to thri thri thrive you because uh, I, I, what, what do I get from YouTube views? You know, it's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's we do. not because uh, I'm, I'm not doing it for the money. It's, 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 it's a passion. I want to tell people about it and I want you that so they, they can get, get, Passions about it. It's great. It's great for Bitcoin. Great for the community. So. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's fun. It's one of the reasons I do fun. my podcast. You know, I like yeah. talking with all the people in Bitcoin companies, and uh, and and my listeners are always on yeah. Twitter. They're like, "Oh, when's the next one coming yeah. out? I love it." Blah blah even, blah. Like, even I mean, when Bitcoin. It's 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 tomorrow. It's gone. I had a blast. Yeah, but I mean, cool. like. It, I mean, if I only did podcast interviews that, like, I made money from, I, I mean, I don't know how many podcast interviews I do. And even if, even if that were my primary motivation, I have a lot of other ways that yeah. I could make a lot more money. Yeah. So, like, there's a lot of opportunity costs. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, I think, I think we, we need to find a way to be financially sustainable uh, as yeah. an, as an industry, because very much this entire industry is still. Uh, very, very small it, and new. Yeah, well, it's yeah. it's it's relatively small, but it's also completely dependent on venture capital money yeah. flowing yeah. into it, and so, 
you know, I don't, I don't, we need cash flowing businesses yeah. is what we need. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't quit my day job before, before that, uh, that happens. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. My so dream is to, to, to work at a Bitcoin uh, company, but it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's, there's no, not, not much companies are yet. And I yeah. want to do something in PR, you know, and then, yeah. And so, you know, my buddy, Justin, the, like complaining about getting paid seven cents a word, like yeah. by yeah, all means, like yeah. go write about marijuana or go yeah. write about beer. Like yeah. he said in his article, um, you know, I mean, you got to find like financially sustainable work. Uh, Bitcoin's a lot more fun. You know, and so you, and you the work know. is coming. The, more, the companies are growing. And yeah, and and the people that are here first, you know, they're going to, you know, when 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 everybody does, you know, as the industry grows and everything, the people that are here first, they're going to know. have network effects in place, yeah. and they're going to have a lot of these benefits and advantages later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so you know, part of it. You know, you do the work now, even though you aren't necessarily getting paid for it, because later it's you're going building to a network. pay a lot more dividends yeah. and stuff, and you're yeah. building the network. Yeah. Um, and, and and because you are around, you know, during the bear market, uh, you know, the people who are around in the bear market, you can trust them, right? Because they're yeah, still they here. Stay. They stay. And, yeah. and so when the big, you know, when the price goes for up again and everybody, yeah, for better or worse, <laughs> when the price goes up and everybody runs in here, well, do you really, like, if you're if you're a Bitcoin yeah. company, do you really want to do business working with and integrating yeah. some new Bitcoin yeah. company that might not be around? No, you want to do business with the companies that yeah. have stuck around during the bear market. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there are advantages to putting in the hard work. It's called sweat equity, you know, yeah. when you're building a when you're building a startup or building your own yeah. company. And I think it applies just as much to Bitcoin. Part of the problem, I guess, is it's been, you know, seven years of sweat equity for some of us, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, we get to have our, our have friends. Great, and our great people. Yeah. Like, you know, like you got to figure out what you want in life. And, yeah. uh, you know, money's not everything. <laughs> no, no. Well, um, I think uh, we discussed a nice, a nice couple of, uh, of topics. Um, I want to say to my listeners, uh, please check the podcast of, uh, of Trace. It's called Bitcoin Knowledge. And you, if, I think you, if you search for podcasts, you find it. Is that yeah, the yeah, way search, to explain? Yeah, you can search Bitcoin in uh, the iTunes store or it's www.bitcoin.kn, uh, like knowledge, KN. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's pretty easy to find. Uh, and, you know, and it, it's great, you know, when people talk about uh, talk about it because I don't do any marketing for it or anything, you know. So if people like it, like just yeah. share it with your friends and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, you know, I try to interview people from across the board uh, in Bitcoin. Uh, I like to I like to help get, you know, the top the top voices. So yeah. I've, interv you know, I've interviewed pretty much everybody, all my friends, you know, Jeff Garzik, Gavin yeah. Andreessen, Dr. Adam Back, uh, Roger Ver, Eric Voorhees, Andreas, I actually got yeah. an interview of him that's going to get published here in a few weeks. Oh, crazy, uh, right. you know, just every, I've done, oh, about a hundred interviews All the checkboxes. So. Yeah. The books are yeah. I mean, everybody working on something, yeah. you know, and, yeah. as opposed to just talking about something. <laughs> and every week there's another uh, topic you can discuss because the, the news is, is going so fast every day. If yeah, when and, I wake up, there's there's all new new news stories. Yeah, I like. well, well, and the and the uh, the podcast interviews, I try to I try to talk about them specifically not, not based on the latest news. So you can actually go back and listen to yeah. you know, one, yeah. an inter an interview that's six months old, and I think you'll get something out of it because you know you you don't necessarily know about Christoph Jentsch's uh, slocket, you know, and it, that's no. a really cool interview that yeah. I did, yeah. and it's just as applicable today as it was back then, I think. So. Uh, or at least 80, 90 percent. So, yeah. you know, people can go listen to the, you know, just go look at the title uh, in the iTunes yeah. player and be like, oh, that one looks cool. I'll listen to that one. Yeah. Well, uh, we all, uh, well, and my my viewers, uh, they, they're going to check, uh, they're going to check it, I guess. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a listener, of course. So I, I, keep, <laughs> I keep listening. Um, well, I want to thank you for this interview. Um, we, uh, my, my, my viewers and I learned a lot uh, about uh, about uh, your view on the on the on the subjects. And uh, you are you you are long in the business already, so uh, it's always nice to talk to someone with uh, with uh, a lot of experience. Um, so thank you, Trace, and I hope to see you uh, somewhere on the road uh, to uh, 
to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to Mars this time, yeah, buddy. We're, we're going to Mars. Mars. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's been uh, it's been so great, like talking with you. And keep up all the good work that you're doing in the Netherlands. Like yeah, I know you do a little part here, and uh, it's, it's going uh, really great. So uh, so uh, yeah, and, uh, we 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 get some some couple of cents from the YouTube views, and they're going to straight going straight into Bitcoin. So. <laughs> Well, keep up the good work. Yeah, it's, it's, I hire a Bitcoin for that. Well, well thank you very much. And um, uh, for the people, for, for my viewers, uh, I see you next week in a new episode of the Bitcoin Report. Have a nice day.